This video is going to discuss a broad topic of ethics and publishing and academic writing. Um, ethics and academic writing includes a variety of topics. It has to do with ethics toward the author, that is, what is the responsibility of the community for the author, and what are the responsibility of the author toward the community. It includes a variety of, of people, editors, peer reviewers, and staff, and a variety of technological tools, sometimes to check whether papers have been copied. Um, there are issues about whether ethics are sloppy, or is it purposefully deceitful? What are the punishments? Should the paper be retracted or simply corrected? And it's importance of the problem, not only for the ethical of the individual author, but also for our understanding of the community, because it's often the community that discovers whether a, there's a problem with a paper. They'll, they'll report it to the et journal, and then the journal has to then decide if take appropriate action. So we're going to look at a, a number of topics regarding um, ethics and, and give some case studies that have been done on ethics. Um, the first has to do with the research process. And we can see a number of issues, citation manipulation. Um, in this case, very specific that the journal retracted a paper where it found that the editor had unnecessary citations to a journal that he was editor of, and therefore it boosted um, the, the number of citations for that journal, which of course affects its impact factor. Um, failure to reproduce, um, as you may know, in some fields, the reproduction of results is very important. Um, and that causes you to make sure that your method section is very carefully written so that other researchers can come in and replicate your methods to see whether your results hold out. Um, in this third case, the journal has retracted a paper because the, the author was not able to support data. So there was some question must have come up about the, the nature of the data. They asked him to report the data, to send him in the data, to defend it, and he, he couldn't do that, and the paper got retracted. Um, in many cases, that's dealt with now that people are, are, are having repositories for providing data so that the journal can check the data. But um, in some cases where the journal doesn't have access to that data, it may ask the researcher to provide data. Um, conflicts of interest is a major process topic. Um, and, and to acknowledge whether somebody is funding your paper, um, you might, this often is, is put in the acknowledgement section of the paper, but you, before the paper gets reviewed, you might need to notify the editor in your cover letter that you send along with your submission that, that you've received funding from a certain group. Um, so this is an issue, of course, in peer review. Um, the, the, this is what you would think peer review is supposed to discover, that there are flaws in the research process, but it doesn't always do this. Um, peer review is assumed to provide this quality. Often it, it, it doesn't, but often the, we'll see that it's the community itself, the network of authors who read, that will call into question certain aspects. So that, so that papers are essentially extends our notion of peer review to include the entire community of readers. Um, some other aspects of the research process has to do with the IRB, if you need an IRB. Uh, often, again, uh, journals sometimes ask authors for IRB, and again, this, they don't necessarily need to see the IRB, but you may need to acknowledge, again, in your cover letter, that um, an IRB exists. Um, other concerns that, that um, journals may have has to do with publishing sensitive data or causing distress. Um, I had a case once where uh, we were doing some research on publishing and we accidentally mentioned the name of a student who had published, who had been accused of plagiarizing. 
the mother came across this when she was searching for her daughter's um, record online. She emailed me and asked me to remove it. And it's very difficult to do. It, it wasn't, I mean, her daughter's case of plagiarizing was publicized. The, the mother had actually gotten the local newspaper to publish an article about it. So it wasn't totally unethical, but, but it, it seemed to me that it might have certain ethical concerns. Fortunately, I, the uh, editor of the journal, which published the article, owed me a favor, and I asked them if they could simply change the PDF file. It was an, it was an online open access journal, so they didn't, there was no print version, so I could just go in, make some changes to the PDF file. They simply re, re um, published the, the article with the new, the hidden name. It's something I probably should have done initially was not to use her real name, but I didn't even notice it until her mother contacted me. Um, there, there, one of the issues that often comes up now is, are there certain topics that you can't publish about? Um, in this case, um, utterly awful. There's a problem of another paper on vaccines and autism, which is a very controversial topic. There was, there was recently a very well-publicized issue about publishing a paper on imperialism um, that the, the journal retracted and, the, and because people said you shouldn't say that. Wh whatever was in the paper, they thought wasn't very proper. Um, another area where research comes in is image manipulation. There was a big case here at Ohio State. Um, the author claimed that they had copied an image from one paper to another. The author claimed it didn't really affect the, the, the results, but the journal felt it did, and, and it, the paper had to be retracted. So again, you, need to con you may need to anticipate any of these issues and communicate somewhere with the, with the uh, editor in a letter or some kind of response or in the text itself where you may notice that there's something wrong. So what kind of punishments exist? Um, obviously one is either to have the paper retracted or resubmitted. Um, you may have sanctions put on authors uh, and they're uninvited to submit, or some report is made to a uh, uh, funding institution or to the author's university. Um, that's complicated. It, they, they don't always seem to get the punishments. Often we find that uh, students get much worse punishments than faculty do. And here you see some examples of researchers who lost their jobs um, for, um, here's one in Brazil who, who had retracted 11 papers and then lost his post, and another researcher in Switzerland who, who lost both his professorship and two of his papers. Now, sometimes you can, you can if you, you yourself sometimes may feel, oh, you made a mistake or there was something wrong, you can retract the paper yourself. Um, in this case, there was a sub an error they found on their spreadsheet and so the paper the, the, the authors went to the, notified the journal the journal retracted the paper um, here's something that that may happen frequently to you that the authors retract the paper after forgetting they published the same study elsewhere I actually sent in a paper once that I had forgot that I had submitted somewhere else and I had to write a very humiliating apology to the editor saying, oh, I'm sorry, I have to retract that paper because I submitted it somewhere else. Um, and sometimes the author just finds that the, their conclusions don't fit in this third case and they retract the paper themselves. Um, probably one of the issues that has come up, and again, it's another issue that, that authors often have to deal with in relation to in, in so when notifying the editor, which is who's the actual author of the paper. Um, so sometimes the author may feel that they're not listed and they should be listed. Sometimes they may feel they're listed and they shouldn't be listed. And again, nowadays this authorship issue has been so frequent that journals ask authors when they, again, in their cover letter to 
acknowledge that they've notified all the authors and all the authors who are listed on the paper have agreed that this is they're really part of the paper. Um, one of the problems that often happens when, when these issues come up is that a f famous author will blame one, somebody in their lab. Um, also, in another course, we looked at some issues regarding blaming grad students. We'll often see that, that grad students or postdocs are often blamed. Although, in ethically, the question is whether everyone is responsible, and, and that's the issue in terms that that the e journal editor doesn't want to have to sort this out and say who's to blame. So that's why nowadays journal editors require you to say, okay, all the authors have signed off on, on this so that no one can say, well, it's somebody else's fault. Um, so there are many disputes over who is an author and, and authors who appear, people put names on authors that they didn't really do anything. Um, you know, again, when you see large numbers of authors, but it really doesn't, it may be a small number as well. Um, sometimes people feel, well, if they put their name, somebody's name on a paper, it makes it look good. Um, sometimes journal editors put authors to add citations that are not relevant, and some authors put more citations, and questions really about citations to themselves. So again, what, what you see here is the ethics consider a whole number of issues that regard your writing. Uh, who's the author of your paper? What papers are you, do you cited? Uh, who, what is what we consider an author in an academic paper? And then who owns the text? Um, one, one of the issues that again comes up a lot is when faculty borrow text. And, they're putting borrow in quotes they're from, from their students. Um, in this case, they found that one, one professor had taken something from his student. And remember, that, that's a, that is a form of plagiarizing because if the student had written it down on another paper, even a class paper, it's still considered intellectual property. So the student owns it. Now, students may be afraid of of going to their professor or challenging their professor because professors still have a lot of power. But in, in effect, that's what um, students have this right to their own property. Um, another paper, it just was a dispute among the authors. The authors didn't quite get on with trying to explain something. And again, the journal just said, I can't wait for them, them to figure this out and they retracted the paper. Now, of course, one of the issues that, that you may be most familiar with is this question of plagiarism. As we've talked about elsewhere, plagiarism is not particularly well defined. Um, so in this case, for example, a person with a high degrees of similarity with previously published work. Now again, Previously published works may refer to the author's own work or to other people's work. So in one case, it's really um, a, a violation of, of one of the internal rules that says you can't submit similar papers to, to different journals. And the other, it may be the violation of more general rule about how much can you copy. Um, and in this case, the authors objected to the retraction that the journal never gave them an opportunity to show their work is different. So sometimes the authors can, can, can fight against the editors in terms of n keeping their paper from being retracted. Um, this is a kind of funny headline, boneheaded mu move. Authors of cancer skeleton paper copy from paper in the same journal. So that's a sort of more obvious issue of plagiarism. Um, other papers, number of papers are retracted from plagiarism. It's, a, it's still a major issue, although again, it's not clearly defined as to what it does mean. Um, and what does, how, whether references in this case, does that really absolve the writer if there is a reference? Um, DMCA refers to notices, these are like take what they call takedown notices. Um, 
And these are very, this is what you see on YouTube a lot if you ever posted something that was in violation of intellectual property law. The, the owner could issue what could, could claim a what's called a DMCA, which co which is a, a law that this digital m digital media copyright act that that they can post that and take you down. Um, misleading readers could could cause an article to be retracted, and images and and I've given you if you can see them. A couple of images that were judged to be plagiarized from one journal to another. Probably the worst kind of, I think, ethical violation is the falsified data. Um, and this is where they deliberately, this is where, of course, the question of whether it's an accident or deliberate falsification. But I think this is a much worse ish ethical issue than plagiarism. So um, that they altered a paper to get a particular result. Um, or they completely fake research. And, and that's, that's been a number of cases. And again, some of these are very difficult for the editor to find it. And usually sometimes this happens in the essentially post-publication period.